We know exactly what Atlantis Island looked like. The description that the Egyptians gave to the Greeks and that which has come down to us today is so detailed that we can not only uh, illustrate what this island looked like, but also to draw city plans of Atlantis City, the capital. So I knew what this island looked like and what I was trying to do is to see is there any landscape in the Mediterranean that matches the description of this island. The only place where an island as high as is described in the Critias could have been completely submerged is a vast basin that was flooded. We knew from recent scientific experiments that the Mediterranean used to be a desert, practically a desert, spotted with lakes and lagoons. The scientists currently believe that the last time the Mediterranean was flooded was about five million years ago. Unfortunately, what they don't know is that we have accounts from ancient geographers uh, stating that the ancient races knew about the Mediterranean being flooded through the Gibraltar. The very reason that the Gibraltar Straits is associated with the Pillars of Hercules is that the old myth was that Hercules pushed these pillars apart, thus connecting the Atlantic with the Mediterranean. Well, we know what this island looks like. Why don't we just look for something on the seabed that may resemble us? And that brought me to this region, because the more I looked at the seabed in this region, the more I noticed that there was a very, very good match. A captain in both the US Coast Guard and Merchant Marine, with an unlimited master's license, Robert S. Bates brought almost half a century of maritime experience to the expedition. He worked alongside Sarmast throughout the lengthy planning and preparation stage. At last, the expedition was RFS, ready for sea. Last line, market, 8.56. On the 8th of November, at 8.56 in the morning, last line on the good ship flying enterprise, and we are Atlantis bound. Looking for a city that's down below the uh, sea surface on the seabed. We've been waiting for some time to see who's going on the trip, who's available. And uh, when it materialised, it was right. This is it. This is it. We're going to go and do something that's really good, not just look for oil and gas again. <laughs> At 9:32, um, we were now out in the Mediterranean. At 10:56, we increased speed, changed course to 086. And uh, nine hours later, we expected to be on the uh, island of Atlantis, one mile above it, not in aerial sense, but that it would be one mile below us in the seabed. At 11.29, um, uh, Axel came up and indicated that uh, Tim needed the, the depth of the seabed. We were now putting together the final uh, preparations in the computer and on the uh, axes and, and on, the, on the charts where we were going to be, how we were going to fly the towfish, what the depth of water was going to be, all of the things absolutely critical. Phoenix International, based in the United States, was contracted to supply the sonar and technical team to search for the remains of Atlantis. Ah, well I do search and RV work, so I've been on the Titanic recently, within the last couple of months. I've uh, done treasure hunting. I found a 1600 year old Roman shipwreck off the coast of Beirut. I do a lot of military stuff with, uh, you know, recovering airplanes, helicopters, that sort of thing. Done a couple of commercial airliner uh, tragedies, really. And uh, so it's not all fun and games. It's not uh, history work. But uh, this type of mission is uh, really the type of stuff that I like to do. Uh, it's been very exciting for me. And to be able to say that I was the project manager on the search for Atlantis was uh, amazing. For this preliminary survey, the 2004 Cyprus-Atlantis expedition purchased just 72 hours of research time at sea. Enough to do the job, given the information they already held on the location of the underwater targets. But with November weather patterns threatening to disrupt the expedition, they had to work around the clock to complete the mission quickly. The sonar is just on a cable 
off the back of the boat, there's no way we can control where that is in relation to the vessel. We know that it's going to be roughly directly out the back of the boat. Okay, um, all we can do is plot a line file for the ship to follow. You know. The targets were carefully selected using two different sets of multi-beam sonar data acquired from earlier general surveys of the eastern Mediterranean. A proprietary imaging program designed for the expedition by the Scotia Group, specialists in geological and engineering projects, was used to convert the multi-beam data into bathymetric maps and 3D models. Grid lines were then overlaid onto the nautical charts in order to plan the exact route that would take the ship and the sonar directly over the targets. With the towfish streaming nearly three miles behind the ship, it was critical to know the craggy terrain below at all times. Uh, you see here the red uh, spot is uh, the highest altitude, which is the Acropolis Hill. Uh, the yellow and green are lower areas. You see here in the north, uh, a 1.5 long straight line which uh, we believe is a wall with a 90 degree corner which is very unnatural and this whole map will then help the navigation on board the vessel and the side scan sonar operators to navigate over the area. The data is returned in real time but in order to interpret the features Russell had to create a mosaic of the big picture. So he was doing that between say one and two and the mosaics that he was putting together were the mosaics over the Acropolis Hill. And at about 2.30, Robert is looking at this stuff. And all of a sudden, things are beginning to make sense about what is on the Acropolis Hill. Uh, now, there were hills, I mean there were rivers, springs that started on the summit and would flow down to fill these canals, right? So you had three rings. This is the old Rivers. I see a wall. Oh my god. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> now we're talking guys. That, that is very discernible too. That is nice and straight. And uh, he brought it up to, to us to see that there were actually two walls that had been that the mosaic when put together showed on top of the Cropless Hill. This was absolutely unbelievable. This is something that we had not seen before. And we have found that that wall is there, even though scientists told us, looking at the original maps that we created using multi-beam sonar, as opposed to side scan sonar, which we're using now. Uh, you know, the scientists were saying that that wall cannot be there, that it had to be an error with the data. And we've now proven that it is there. It's very real. And it's also about a mile and a half from the center of the summit and that's the exact dimensions that Plato gave, about a mile and a half radius between the outer canal wall and the summit area. The results we're picking up are matching what Robert says, where it should be, what it is. We're just trying to decipher what's below the salt. And still the excitement's there. There's a lot of guys wanting to go, let's do another one, let's have a look around this corner, let's, uh, let's get some more. <laughs> we now felt that it had all been justified. We felt that indeed the um, effort that everybody had put in justified and Robert's uh, discovery of Atlantis was now fixed in the place of history. We'll go home tomorrow with uh, everything we came here to do and it should be very exciting once we convert these maps and this data to 3D and really get uh, a 3D perspective as opposed to just the top side view. Armed with the positive results from the 2004 Cyprus Atlantis expedition, the first ever using modern scientific methods, Robert Sarmast and his team are ready to take the next step. They are planning the return voyage for an even closer look at the Acropolis Hill. Uh, what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be going over the same area. I'm going to be looking at those walls with 500 kilohertz size scan sonar, uh, which basically means we'll get a much higher resolution look. We're going to see every nook and cranny in this area. What we're hoping for is that there'll be some protrusion, something sticking out of the muck that's built over the summit over the thousands and thousands of years below the waves. We're not sure if we're going to find that, but 
we have been successful in finding what we thought would happen, which was that there would be the structures and the walls and so forth were massive enough that even with the silting and the sedimentation that we could still see them and we, they could still be defined and uh, that we've been successful and they are there uh, obviously they're under sediment but they're very clear they stick out like a sore thumb right there on this hill using high frequency side scan sonar a sub bottom profiler and perhaps even a remote operated vehicle armed with video cameras Robert Sarmast and his team are determined to give the world its first real look at the city of legend. Lost beneath the waves for thousands of years, the city he believes has now finally been found. The discovery of Atlantis to be continued. We know exactly what Atlantis Island looked like. The description that the Egyptians gave to the Greek, I noticed that there was a very, very good match. A captain in both the US Coast Guard and Merchant Marine with an unlimited master's license, Robert S. Bates brought almost half a century of maritime experience to the expedition. He worked alongside Sarmast throughout the lengthy planning and preparation stage. At last, the ex The Mediterranean being flooded through the Gibraltar. The very reason that the Gibraltar Straits is associated with the Pillars of Hercules is that the old myth was that Hercules pushed these pillars apart, thus connecting the Atlantic with the Mediterranean. Well, we know what this island looks like. Why don't we just look for something on the seabed that may resemble this? And that brought me to this region, because the more I looked at the seabed in this region, the more and that which has come down to us today is so detailed that we can not only uh, illustrate what this island looked like, but also to draw city plans of Atlanta City, the capital. So I knew what this island looked like, and what I was trying to do is to see is there any landscape in the Mediterranean that matches the description of this island? The only place where an island as high as is described in the Critias could have been completely submerged is a vast basin that was flooded. We knew from recent scientific experiments that the Mediterranean used to be a desert, practically a desert, spotted with lakes and lagoons. The scientists currently believe that the last time the Mediterranean was flooded was about five million years ago. Unfortunately, what they don't know is that we have accounts from ancient geographers uh, stating that the ancient races knew about